Hello everyone. We're doing another video. I built a 12 volt power pack and now we're going to hook up some uh, inverters. There's a couple different types of inverters. And we're going to hook up a solar panel too. When you're buying inverters, there's a couple different kinds. We have the modified inverter, which is kind of like these cigarette cheap ones that you buy. And then we have a pure sign inverter. The difference is, a, lot, a big difference is the cost. This cigarette lighter cost about 20 bucks. And then this one here I picked up on eBay for $79. So that was a pretty good price really. This is a Ames 180 watt pure sign inverter and then this one is uh, 140 watts. What these do is they'll convert your 12 volt DCs into 120 volt same as what's in your house so you know it's very dang these are very dangerous just use common sense. It's exactly like your house electricity. You know, don't use it around water. Don't stick anything in the outlets. I mean, this will kill you just like a regular household house, household electricity would. So be careful. This unit here is made to take up to 10 amps and it's 12 volts so a big number you want to keep in your head is 10 amps times 12 volts is 120 watts so with this particular unit 120 watts is a very important number you do not want to plug anything, any AC appliance that's more than 120 watts. Same thing goes with the inverters. This is 140 watts, which is a little more than 120, but so you could plug up to 140 watts, but we're not going to with this inverter plugged into here we can only go to 120 so same this one's 180 so when you're buying them don't you know don't buy no 700 watt inverters for this unit unless you're putting them into uh, using them on uh, bigger batteries or connecting them directly to a 12 volt batteries the main reason why this is uh, 10 amps or 120 watts is because of the size of the wiring inside and the way it's designed and built. The size of the wire is a big factor. Electricity is, it's kind of like water flowing through a hose, your water hose in your house your garden hose you have your amps which is the flow and then the volts is the pressure so the smaller the ho hose if you're thinking about water going through a hose the more pressure there's going to be the more resistance there's going to be so if the wires are not big enough if the wires are too small, you're going to create heat, which will melt your wires. So that's the reason a lot of these are like this unit here is designed to carry 120 watts and no more. Another factor would be the length of the wire. You know, if you're thinking about the garden hose trying to push 
water through a wire or a hose that's longer is going to cause more friction. So the length of wires is also a big factor in determining the, the wattage. You don't want to put any longer wires that are already on these inverters. They're designed for the length that's already on and the ratings. These plug right in, so they're designed to go into cars. With the modified inverters, the difference between modified and pure also is the modified is what you call a dirty, I'll call it a dirty electricity. It's not as consistent, it's not as clean as a pure sign inverter gives out. The pure sign is more consistent with your actual household electricity. So everything will run better with a pure sign. There are some things that you don't really want to run with the modified inverter because they don't like it at all, the, the electricity that comes out. When, you're, when you buy these, just read all the directions real carefully and thoroughly and follow them. One way to figure out what your uh, watts are on your appliances is with one of these, it's a kilowatt hour. You just plug it into the wall and then plug your appliance and it'll give you the watts, the amps, gives you everything. These are really nice to figure out. A lot of appliances have it stamped right on it so you can look that up but I like to use this so I know exactly what my watts are. It's a kilowatt hour. Now when you're converting your AC to DC or your DC to AC for instance this this is a laptop it uses 65 watts 0.54 amps but that doesn't mean you're using 0.54 amps once it's converted so you got to be very careful you want your watts so you can take your 65 watts divided by 12 equals 5.4 amps so when you're using a, uh, 120 volts So yeah, at 120 volts you're using 0.54 amps, but not at 12 volts. At 12 volts you're going to be drawn times 10, 5.4 amps. So you got to be careful when you figure that out. If you figure out what your watts are, then you, you, you can just divide it by 12 on your AC appliances. Because we're using 12 volts. We're converting 12 volts to 120 volts. I'll try to explain this a little better with uh, we got the laptop plugged in to the modified. By the way, uh, most of these laptops will run off a modified. 80% of your appliances will run off a modified there are some things that won't and that's why you would want to buy your pure sign we'll go over some of that later but anyway for instance right now and I got the kilowatt hour plugged in we're using 0.23 amps but that is at 120 volts because it's coming out of your modified uh, inverter Since we're drawn out of a 12 volt battery, you need to take that times 10. So really it's drawn 2.2 amps out of this 12 volt DC battery.
So if you can get your watts, that's the most important number. We got 25 watts coming out of 120, and it's 120. So once you find your uh, watts, then you just divide it by 12. So 25 divided by 12, that's 2 amps. You're drawing 2 amps out of here. You don't want to go no more than 10. At 120 volts, you're only drawing 0 0.2 amps. Hopefully that explains it. I know it's confusing, but maybe that'll help. By the way, this laptop, right now it's only running at 27 watts. When the fan's running and it's all fired up, it'll run up to about 65 watts. So we went over the laptop. Most laptops will work. The only way to really know is to uh, call the manufacturer and ask them if it'll work off a modified inverter. Another way to find out is to uh, keep an eye on the power pack if it gets hot because that's what will happen with modified. It will uh, burn up your power packs. No, you can use uh, cell phones. They have a USB port on this particular one. So you can charge your cell phone, use your cell phones off modifieds. Small radios, small lights, uh, regular lights will work off modifieds. Some of the things you do not want to run on a modified inverter are switch mode power supplies, class 2 transformers, shaded pole motors, fan motors, microwave ovens, fluorescence with the ballast. Here's an example of like, this is to my uh, drill wireless drill it's a class 2 transformer what will happen with these they'll get hot and you'll burn them up with the modified they don't like the modified electricity here's a switched transformer and this is also a class 2 transformer here's another transformer a lot of these like this is a two-way radio, it has a class 2 transformer, so it's probably going to get hot. Any type of digital radios, this is a shortwave radio, class 2 transformer, you don't want to use it. That's the reason why I wanted to have a pure sign inverter, because all of these will work fine with a pure sign inverter. And these are a lot of things that I wanted to run. If you're just using laptops or charging your batteries for your cell phones, items like that, you know, there's a lot of items that will run off modified, but in case of emergency, I wanted to have the pure sign, the pure sign inverter. I'll hook a couple things up so you can see them, see how it works and how they run. I'll hook up a, this fan here. It has a motor which the modified does this fan does not like the modified electricity at all and I'll show you that how it works and then I'll hook it up to the pure sign here's just a drawing of here's a modified graph and then here would be your pure sign electricity graph the modified is more of a square and then the pure sign is more a smooth electricity. The voltage drop is more square. So there's a lot of things that don't like that. Here's an example of the fan I got running right now. It's taking up 49 watts of 120 volt. So it's running off the modified, but as you can 
I don't know if you can hear it, but it's making a humming noise. So what will happen is eventually this will heat up and it could burn it out. You know, in an emergency it'd be fine if you're not going to be running it too long, but now I'll hook it up to the pure sign. So we have the pure sign inverter hooked up. The fan is running nice and smooth, no humming noise. So it's not going to burn up the motor. This is more like your household electricity that the electric company supplies. We have these are these pure sign inverters are more efficient too, so they run more efficient. They don't use up as much electricity, but this is running at 43.4 watts. So you divide that by about 45 watts divided by 12, that'd be 3.7 amps of DC that it's drawn out of the battery. So you could run this for, say, this is a 17 amp hour battery. So you could run this, say, about 4 amps per hour, 3.75 or 4 amps per hour. So you could run this for about 4 hours before you drain your battery. Then you'd have to charge it up again. You can plug any of these transformers into this pure sign and they, it'll work just great. It'll charge your batteries. Like these, these just have small batteries in them so it doesn't take up hardly any amps at all or any use on your amp hours on your battery. You could hook up a, any type of a power tool drill charger radios this is nice you can plug this in it's switchable so it has different connections if you don't have any of your smaller bat batteries you can switch the voltages to 1.5 3 4.5 6 7.5 9 and it, and it also has a 12 volt on this one this is a type 2 transformer and you probably wouldn't want to use this on your modified inverters. With this pure sign inverter that I bought, it's uh, recommended that you only use 80 watts with the cigarette lighter. If you plug it directly into the battery with these other cables that they give you with alligator clips, then you can run the whole 180 watts. But if you're Using the cigarette lighters, they recommend 80. You know, you can run the full 80, maybe even a little more, and you'd be fine. I think they're they're just some of the cars. They're assuming that you're going to be plugging it into your car, so some of the wiring in your car is going long distances to the battery, and they don't want them to overheat. They also have protection in these if you're drawing too much watts it's going to shut off reverse polarity protection and some other protections same with this the modified so if you're just going to be charging laptops and cell phones and small running small appliances then your modified's fine it's a lot cheaper go ahead and get it if you want to if you have a little extra money i recommend getting the pure sign cuz in an emergency, you never know. I didn't realize how much information alone, and I probably didn't even get all the information out. I just trying to help a little bit for some of the beginners on how to use these inverters. So I'm going to have to do video number four. This is already 20 minutes long. I'm going to do video four with the solar panels. I have video one, two, this is three with the inverters, and then four, we'll do solar panels, hooking up the solar panels, which is probably the best one. Thanks for watching everyone. These kilowatt water meters, which I highly recommend too, are really cheap. They're only like, you can pick them up for 15 bucks on eBay. So, Thanks for watching everybody. On to the next video.